Hello and welcome back. This is episode two of how to not suck at teaching music. If you checked out episode one already, thank you very much. If you didn't, you can see it right here. In that episode, I talked about ego, which I think is a very, very uh, important topic in music education. In this episode, I'm gonna be talking about something that just woo, drives me absolutely insane. And that is the concept of one size fits all. And now that has many different meanings, but I'm just gonna be talking about a couple specific examples in this that I'm sure uh, if you've been in lessons yourself or you've been a teacher, you have come across for this instance and for one size fits all, I'm really talking about when a teacher pushes an agenda on a student without regard to the individual student. Now this is sadly something I've come across far too often. Uh, I've seen it in action, I've heard it from students, I've heard it from other teachers, um, and it really does a disservice to the student when you force them into a box without, without taking into account the individual student's needs. I just got done teaching at jazz camp actually for a week and it was great. We, uh, we got to do a lot of stuff, put on a concert at the end, you know, elementary through high school age students. And I was talking to a lot of them about different things and about their own programs and what they do with music um, on their own time. And uh, a couple of things really stood out to me. One of them is in regard to equipment. Okay, you know, I was talking to some of the saxophone players and they said, you know, uh, what reeds do you use? They asked me and I told them what I use, but I said, you know, it doesn't mean you should use them or, or it's gonna be good for you, but that's what I use and it seems to work for me. They're like, oh, my teacher says I can only use and I'm not gonna say the brand or the, the size or whatever, but the teacher said they can only use one brand of reed and one size. Now that seems ridiculous to me, both accounts. Obviously, just saying you have to use a certain brand is bad enough, but then to say you have to use the same size is absolutely ridiculous. So let's just talk about that. Let's unpack this for one second. So as a saxophone player or clarinet player, anybody that uses a reed instrument, you know that different cuts feel different, filed, unfiled. Different strengths obviously feel different. They depend on many things. Maybe the tip opening of the mouthpiece, how much air you have, your embouchure, the style of music you're playing. Um, and all of them go into account to create a certain sound or a certain comfort level for the musician. And that's where I think it's really important to try different things because it's all about being comfortable a lot of times you can play different equipment and you can do a playing test for an audience of some sort you know and they they most of the time won't be able to tell the difference unless it's very drastic a lot of it is how comfortable you are on your equipment I always say find something that you're most comfortable with stay on it for a while and then you will kind of develop your sound around that equipment if, if you're forced to use for example a size three and a half read or three hard read or whatever and you don't use a lot of air it's gonna it's gonna be really tough if you have a wide open mouthpiece too it's gonna be really tough to get the sound out just in general and then when you do get it out it's gonna be a specific way get something that that works for you um, and then go with that so I can almost see what a director means if they want for example in a jazz band saxophone section if they say all of you have to use X brand read because they all sound one way and I want a nice unified sound. Well, that's nice in theory, but just because this player and this player use the same read, it doesn't mean they're going to sound the same. And and that that seems pretty common knowledge to me and common sense, but it's not common practice. And I think that's it's really sad. And then what it does is it tells the student that this is now the best read, or you have to use this, so they're trying to force something in there. Now, it might work for the student, and that's great. If it happens to work for them, awesome, use it. But to say you can only use one size read is just ridiculous, or one brand read. That's like saying everybody in the band has to wear size eight shoes. Or all the drummers have to use a certain drum stick. Or the bass players have to use certain strings, and the piano player has to have the bench at a certain height. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and on the topic of gear, you know, brass mouthpieces is the same way. You know, you can say there's a good starting point, and that's not what I'm talking about, by the way. I'm not saying, you know, you shouldn't just say, hey, use this reed to start. Like, for example, a lot of third or fourth graders, if they start on saxophone or clarinet, they're gonna get probably size two reed, maybe two and a half. That's great to start because they don't know any better. If they just go out and buy a size four reed to start for a, a nine-year-old, it's not gonna work out too good. To start, it's fine, but then branch out as they get a little more, uh, a little older. You know, and when you're talking about brass instruments and brass mouthpieces, I, I don't claim to know everything or even <laughs> a moderate amount about brass instruments. I know a little bit. 
you know, and most trumpets anyway come with a Bach 7C mouthpiece. Great mouthpiece to start on, and it might be a great mouthpiece to continue on. Um, it all depends on the person, and it all depends on the player. So say you start on and then only use it the rest of your life is is really putting a putting a putting you into a box that you might not necessarily uh, need to be in. And to say, hey, start on it, but then try different things, and if you come back to it and that's the best, stay on it. That's a good uh, plan of attack. Now, along with all the equipment talk, is also how you set up to play the instrument. And I don't mean your setup as in equipment, because I just talked about that, but I mean how you literally play the instrument. For example, saxophone players, once again, I'm a saxophonist, so I'm gonna focus on that a little more. Saxophone players usually have two options when sitting down. Put the saxophone in the middle or on the side. Play what's best for you, what's most comfortable for you, what sets you up in the best playing position so you have the best airflow, best posture, so you can see the music, see the director, so you can reach everything and just be comfortable. To say that every saxophonist has to play in the middle or every saxophonist has to play on the side is just being ignorant to the to the differences in, in human makeup, you know? Stop trying to tell kids, or not even kids, just stop trying to tell students in general, you have to play one way and that's the best way. My way is the best way. Comes back to ego. My way or the highway. Rah, 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 rah. It's ridiculous. Stop it. Stop it. God. It's it just... It, it's it's so sad to see because they might genuinely think that they're doing a, a, a doing a good job for these students and doing the right thing and saying, well, I play on this mouthpiece, so you have to play on this mouthpiece. I play this saxophone, therefore this saxophone is the best. I really like the sound of this one better. No! Come on. The last thing I'm going to talk about for One Size Fits All is teaching style or learner style. You know, not to get too uh, teachy here for the public school teachers out there, but, you know, differentiation in the classroom is a big thing. And student success and their learning in the classroom really depends on how they learn. And how they learn a lot of times depends on how they're taught. So, for example, I have some students that, that just have great feel and can just play anything, but they have a really hard time with the theoretical aspect of things. Okay, I'm not going to then teach them and say you only play by ear and we're never going to learn theory because, you know what, we don't need that because this is jazz, man, killing, man, all the cats out there, man, they learn on the bandstand, man, and then the kid goes into school and has to sight read for, for something and there's changes there and he has no idea what he's doing and he sounds horrible and everybody thinks he's a terrible player and he gets down on himself. And that's just not good. Teach them all sides of this and then let, have them make their decisions as they get older, kind of where they're going to go. Same thing on the other side. If I'm going to say, listen, you need to play classical trumpet only. No jazz. No this. No that. No rock and roll. You can't play in that pop band. Don't do it. Classical is the only way to play. You do all these trumpet concertos and that's all great stuff. But to then say you can't do anything else. One size. This is the way it has to be. That, that's ridiculous. Now there might be certain teachers out there that specialize in one area or the other and then therefore it'd be good for the student to then maybe take some lessons from them, some lessons from them. I know people have done that. They take classical lessons from someone. They take improv specific lessons from someone else and then they might do just technique lessons and breathing exercises from someone else. Now if you want to get that diversified that's that's great but you know as a as a teacher I think it'd be more beneficial for you and for your students to be more well-rounded you know and that's just my opinion you know it could be completely wrong but once again that's just kind of what I think um, is best in this day and age you know where kids and, and people of all ages are playing so many different styles they're playing in so many different bands it just helps them the most to be well-rounded and, and, and be well-versed in multiple disciplines and multiple ways to play so basically this episode is just about giving the student as many opportunities as possible to learn different ways and different subjects, and then for them to kind of take from that what they can to be as successful as possible. I'm not saying you can't be a specialist in one area as a teacher or a learner, and I'm not saying that, you know, the people that are specialists are bad. I'm just saying I've seen it be detrimental to students firsthand, um, the one-size-fits-all mentality. And, and it's really sad because when you go into teaching, hopefully you're going into it because you have something to offer students to keep this music going and keep the love of music going. Or even the teaching of music. You know, you teach kids and then they'll, they'll grow up to be teachers as well. You definitely didn't get into it for the money. I know that's for sure. You know, I, I just hate to see it. And it's, it's sadly, it's way too often that we do see it. So thank you guys for sticking with this one. I hope you enjoyed it. And it's just me ranting here a little bit, I know. And if you don't want to 
hear this, if you just want to get to smooth jazz videos, check out some other ones here and here. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next video.